And now we would like to welcome Tim from the Rochester Museum and Science Center to the show. Hey, Tim. How's hey, guys. Going? I'd shake hands with you, but I got the gloves on okay. for the for the white's frog, okay. white tree so, frog. Yeah, so what is this? Well, we've got a couple of things. We've got the white's tree frog right here. Yep. Okay. And uh, let's see if we can get the little guy out without too much brouhaha. Oh, he's not happy about this. No, he's a, he's a slippery little devil. Oh. So why do they call it the White's Tree Frog? Because of the coloring? No, because the guy who actually found it, ah. they're from Australia. <laughs> I've heard that about a lot of kinds of animals. If you were and the discoverer of it, they name it after you? Yeah, well, let's see if we can get him. He wants to go out this way, then we'll see if we can bring him out through he here. You want to hold this? There we go. Oh, there you go. Okay. Oh, all right, cool. All right, so all you right. said um, that they were in Australia. Where else? Can you find them? They're, well, pet shops, well, but Australia, they're, they're mostly found in Australia and the southern part of Australia. You'll find them if you live in Australia in your gardens sure. quite often. Oh, wow. They're pretty cool. They eat mostly insects. They'll eat, they'll eat other little frogs, and uh, they're oh. kind of neat because they'll actually when they have predators attack them, like an owl or yep. another animal to grab them, they can scream. Ah. Now you name all your animals. What's his name? Lime. 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 Okay. There's okay. lemon and lime. They change colors. Okay. They change colors with their with their environment, with their mood. Part of his and camouflage, or might be part of his camouflage. A lot of times, it just seems to be how they feel at the time. His his <laughs> buddy, uh, Lemon, turns really brown all the time. Really? So he's yeah. He sits up by the light and. My bearded turns. dragon does that. Changes colors. Sometimes yeah. I think because of heat, but other times it's just in your arm. She'll change. Just happy-go-lucky yeah. or whatever, yeah. and they're uh, they're kind of neat because they can't they their teeth they really aren't good for chewing. So when right. it does when it's a, something close by, they can snag it with their sticky tongue, or they'll pounce on whatever it is they're going after. And then you watch them; they'll take their hands and they'll just shove it in there. So now, when they're eating, like we've seen some other types of frogs and toads, where they use their eyes use to their help. Eyes. He These guys use, don't. He doesn't use his okay. eyes to. But now you're wearing do. gloves. The reason. Yeah. Being, why are you wearing the gloves? Because the oils and 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 of the contaminants on your hands actually through their skin that's how they drink that's how they draw in moisture sure. oh, so, so they, they can would, they can bring in whatever you have on your hands they would taste through the their skin. well and that's why you, uh, scientists use them as indicators in an environment to the health exactly. of the environment exactly right so now, that, does he have any predators and how do they protect themselves if they do well he's got he's got a lot of different predators anything from other large large toads a crane toad will will go after him a large any kind of owl any kind of Critter that's running around that eats other critters will get a hold of him. And like I said, he he can jump really fast, right. climb really quickly. Okay. He's got little pads on his feet so that they're very. That's where it comes in common a little bit with uh, well, the gecko. The, uh, the glass? Stick, oh, and then we'll never see him oh, again. No, I, oh, he'll okay. hop away. He's, okay. Well, he's just he's really pretty active today. So I'm just happy that he's got the the camera thing going sure. right now. <laughs> but let's put him back right. and see if. Uh, well, let's see if we can just. There you go. There you go. He's up. Oh, he's it. hanging out. Oh, yeah. There you go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so cool. that's that's our white tree frog. Now we have our crested gecko. All right. And the name of the crested gecko is why? Well, when we pull them out, we'll take a look. And you don't need gloves for this one. No, not for the crested. Because they're reptiles. They have scales and not. Um, oh, he's jumpy too. Softer fly or they all are. skin. They're camera shy. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's just. The thing is, every time you take them out, you feed him, or sure. you'll. Oh, so he's uh, gonna hey, do a, it's dinner time. He's going to do a show. So right yeah. now, he's he's only a day away. He's supposed to be fed tomorrow, but right. he's like, well, today is just as well. You see the crested? Look at his head. Look at how he's shaped. Oh yeah. And oh, okay. They also call him the eyelash gecko because right. if you look really close, you can see the oh, the mounds spiky. over his eyes look like little eyelashes. Sure. They also call him the uh, New Caledonia gecko because okay. that's where he's found. Right. Actually. They thought him to be extinct really? up until 1994 when oh. they found him and well, back in New Caledonia. Like. And the cool part about him is, is that they reproduce very well in captivity hmm. and they're back with a fervor now. He's kind of neat. He's got really neat eyes 
And if you're lucky, every once in a while, you'll catch him. He'll clean his eyeballs with his tongue. Yeah, I can touch my nose. There he starts yeah, there, Did he just right. do it? Well, he's, well he's, he heard about Oh, do it, okay. do it. Do it. There, there you, go. you go. There you go. So now do those prickly things on top of their eyes do anything other than just? Just protect from okay. Let him know. Probably sensitive. Same as like a cat's whisker, okay. so they know where, where he's going across. Okay. We can take him. Let's see if we can uh, put him on. Now, while you're doing that, um, you said that he's from the the long way. New okay. Caledonia. So New Caledonia, that's what off the East Coast. What kind of climate is that? He likes either uh, mild tropical weather okay. he can live in. Oh, well, look at him go. Yeah, he's, that's because if you can get a, if we can slow him down for a second, you can take a look at the pads on his feet. He's got little nano pads. Cool. Cetas that, cups. little hair, cetas that, can turn grip around even and, on something this smooth. That's smooth. They break down into a spatulae. Wow. And it's it's a it's not a covalent, not an ionic, but it's almost easy way to call it is a magnetic bond. Wow. The electrons hold on to the surface, the electrons in the other surface. It's uh, Van der Waals sure. force that he used. There he goes, another good eye clean. <laughs> right. And this side too. He, well, he's hungry. And what he loves, he loves crickets uh -huh. and worms and mealworms. Yep. He'll eat all those. He, he especially likes crickets. And they're very neat. They turn around. That's where the, in common somewhat with the white tree frog because the white tree frog doesn't have the nano hairs. He's got the little nano pillars, they call it. Okay. Long little tubes on the end of his feet. They have almost look like suction cups. Sure. And okay. they hold on pretty well, unless the surface gets really wet. Right. When we spray them at the, uh, at the museum, you'll see him and he'll <laughs> grab on and he'll Slide just be going down. down. <laughs> he says, you did it again to me. Whereas Rocco, he turns around, he can climb on just about anything. Cool. Now does Rocco um, shed his skin at all? As a matter of fact, he does shed his skin. And the cool part there, depending on how you look at it, is that he'll eat his own skin. Really? Ew. Yeah. Well, it's there. People chew their nails, right? So that's well, right. That's so true. That's same true. Same thing. Right. But why he does it, there's a couple of different theories. One is that if he eats all the skin, that his predators won't know that there's actually a gecko around. Plus, some there's some thought to the fact that he he actually gets protein from it. <coughs> okay. And it's cool, his tail is prehensile, so it can wrap around and grab on. It's got a little nano pad on the end of it, too. So he's, uh, he's well-versed to climb around. Now, do these creatures have um, any adaptations that? Well, his, his, the big adaptations that he's got is would be the nano pads. Okay, and is and that similar to lime? Si uh, similar to lime, <laughs> lime's pads. Lime also, the, uh, the fact that lime can scream. Now I've heard lime scream before and I really just don't get how that would scare something that was eating right. it, but you know. Sure, it's just a startle for a second to get yeah, away and that's all they that's need. That's all they need, so, and I don't mention it to him because no sense in <laughs> busting his high when he's, he's said <laughs> he about, doesn't know. Listen to this, I can hit a note. Cool. But uh, this guy, his is mostly, he can jump really well. Right. He's okay. a nocturnal, right. so that's another one of his. Oh, okay. His, outdoors at uh, night. Yeah, right. outdoors at night, and during the day he just hides away and. Uh, Look at him go. Yeah. Yep. Well, Tim, thank you thank very, you very much. much, Tim. No, thank you very thank much you. for having me and having the boys. Now, we would like to thank Tim for being here tonight, and now stay right there. We'll be back in a second.